So standing pose is usually very simple to do and often things don't really go wrong. Where things may go wrong is in fact on sitting poses. Let me show you how to do one of those. If I go back all the way so that our character is in the A pose, this is one of those things where you probably want to utilize the timeline here. And I might go and do that right away. I'm going to switch this duration to the timeline play range uh, because uh, for DeForce to understand that I want to sit my figure down, I need to really tell it how sitting down would happen in real life. So in real life, we just don't start with a half crumpled piece of cloth while we're already sitting down and then trying to settle it. The DeForce doesn't like that. You're going to have to tell it, well, here's a seat, here's a figure. Figure moves towards the seat and actually moves in the seated position. And DeForce will understand that. But again, you need to help it out a little bit for the results to be good. I could use another cube for her to sit down, but I might not do that. I might go and uh, utilize something that is part of the diner animation that I've made earlier, namely the double triangle diner, one of from Decogon Studios, one of my very favorite. And I might just go and use maybe this one here, the double chair. I think it also comes with a single chair option. This one here. DTD single chair. I'm gonna go and bring that in and put it into position, making absolutely sure I'm on frame zero of my animation. Very important. Let's say this is where the seat is in your environment and you've brought your figure as close as you can towards it and you want her to sit down in it. And for that, you're going to have to tell DeForce how to do that. So on the first frame with your character selected, she needs to be in the A pose. We should also clear the animation here. Let's go and clear that. On frame zero, she needs to be in this position. So let's go and set a keyframe on her. Then on the last frame, whichever that is, could be 30, could be 60. We'll go, we'll try 30. And if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll try 60. On the last frame of your animation, you want to have the sitting position. Let's see how that works. Under poses, roller girl poses, there might be some sitting poses. I'm sure there are. They're sitting on the ground, they're standing next to a chair. Is that kind of sitting on a chair type thing? There's something like that. Let's try it. Let's see what this is like. So make sure you're on the last frame of the animation and dial in your seated pose. And this might work. We don't have a table. Let's not worry about the table. But also we need to put her into position. So I need to push her back to where she should be sitting. And this is all on the last frame of the animation. And one other thing, you want to make sure she does not intersect with the geometry like that. That's very important because if she is at any point during the simulation process, it'll mean that DeForce is going to try to make this happen, but won't be very successful. So let's go and bring her up just a little bit. This is okay. Just look at the character and her legs that they shouldn't intersect because it means DeForce is going to have major difficulties in figuring out where the dress needs to go. So you need to have a little bit of a gap between the chair and the figure so that the dress has space in the middle to kind of settle down. If you don't do that, we're going to explode it. So let's do something like that. And don't worry if it appears to be a little bit too high right now. Yeah, I see that the uh, other leg is still intersecting. So we don't, ideally, we don't really want that. Yeah, so there's a little bit of space that DeForce can work that out. If this is still too big a gap, you can correct that later. That's no problem. But for the animation to work like this, this is a start. Also, be prepared to try this multiple times until you find the correct simulation for your needs. Let's try this out, see what happens. So we should go back to here. And now we're gradually moving the figure back while DeForce is calculating at every frame um, what the dress is supposed to look like. Usually when DeForce slows down a lot during like the frame by frame animation it's a it's a good indication that, uh, that an explosion is imminent i'll show you how that looks i'm sure you've seen it before so there we go this is now settled down and nothing's exploded which is really nice so she's not quite down enough. So this is something else you can fix with the magic of a smoothing modifier. You could create an indentation in the seat so that she and her dress actually have space to sink in. And that's also what would happen in real life. When you have a seat that kind of, you know, the moment the person sits in, it kind of bends down. So we could talk about that if you like. That's another possibility. But just for now, I think it'll be effective enough if we just, on the last frame, just go put the whole figure down a little bit. 
And you know, that's probably forgivable. It would be even cooler if we had that indentation. I might just show you how to make that. I don't want to make it too complicated because it's not really a default topic, but it'll help with that simulation. Yeah, because the dress is intersecting here. I mean, the good thing is now that you're in this position, if you wanted to make any other quick fixes and small changes, you can always use Blender or Hexagon or ZBrush to make those changes. And you can, of course, also, if you feel this isn't settled enough, you can just increase the amount of frames. Let's do that. Let's bring her, let's, in fact, let's bring her, deliberately sit her down like that, which is what, you know, what novices might do. You do this and you go, hey, I'm going to go and clear the simulation and I'll go and have her start again. This is usually what happens when you, when you do that. You have intersecting geometry and then you run deforce on it and then things explode. And it's just because, you know, intersecting geometry, deforce doesn't like that. See, pause. Deforce is visibly slowing down and oh, I was lucky. You're not always this lucky. So try it out. So this is a much better result of the figure now actually sitting on the chair and the cloth draping correctly over it. So this is actually really nice. I'm really pleased with that. That is very, very cool. I didn't think it was going to do that because there's clearly some intersections going on here. Wow, that is very, very cool. I do like that. Deforce is behaving wonderfully today. This is really nice. Often when you make clothing, and I, I often watch my buddy Chris, he streams over on Twitch. He makes uh, Deforce clothing and uh, we're, we're basically explosion buddies. Every time I try it from scratch to apply Deforce to an item of clothing, things just go poof, just with normal poses, you know. And that's often because items in the outfits intersect with one another. So if you had something like a belt or a belt buckle or collar or something, uh, just folds that intersect with one another. Even something like a top and a separate pair of trousers that might intersect with one another at any given point, it just goes But in principle, you have to tell Deforce, hey, this is where the character starts. Then they move into position and then things can settle down that way. So let's try one other thing. If, imagine you had done this and you say, hey, I'm not entirely happy, first of all, with the characters a bit too deep in the seat. I'm going to make it a little bit, not quite sitting so deep in the seat. Uh, but I find also that the item of clothing hasn't quite settled down enough. I wish there was a way that I can keep my position, but I want Deforce to render this in more frames. There's multiple ways of doing it. My favorite is literally just opening the timeline and just sticking with the timeline play range here and first of all expanding this to the amount you want so like in my case 60 frames plus one and uh, then you can go and take this keyframe that's now at frame 30 and just move that further back that's one option the other option is also i think you can just go and increase the frame rate like the the frames per second that's a possibility let me show you how to do this with moving the keyframe this just in case you didn't know this on on the timeline uh the triangles uh, can you see that maybe this is maybe this is better can you see that better the triangles aren't actually keyframes just in case you didn't know this the triangles are markers that show you where keyframes on the timeline are hiding so somewhere inside genesis 8.1 on this frame there are keyframes but this is not the actual keyframe das studio is trying to be nice and gives you this option that you can right click and say uh, copy these selected keyframes so keys could be one could be multiple you can use that and try it out move the playhead somewhere else like to the last frame here to 60 and then go and right click again and choose paste uh, keys, paste keys, there we go. And often it works, sometimes it does not. It's also uh, left clicking and dragging doesn't always work, especially for triangles. You can now go and to just delete it. Or what you can do is you can open up the character here and find where the keyframes are. Sometimes this requires digging like under general transform. I can see where these keyframes are here under translation. And here's these two keyframes. Those are actual keyframes. So the round bits, they are keyframes. And they can usually be left clicked and dragged. They can also be copied and pasted. You can copy and paste the translation independently, X independently of the Y and so forth. But there's so many more that often this approach with the triangles is the easier one. Just wanted you to know that these are the keyframes. The triangles are not. So it's something to, to be aware of. You can still delete all of these in place Yes, there we go. That's that's done. That's done that. Perfect. So now I have my last keyframe 
set that was on frame 30 is now on frame 60. And if I go and do this all again, I can go and clear my simulation properties. And now DeForce is going to do this over a course of 60 frames. It'll take a bit longer, but if you move your character a lot, then you can see that sometimes the dress is kind of moving forward too much as you position your character. And by increasing the frames, it'll be that that effect is going to be much less so.